To, the, to nerds the world over, Katie Sackhoff. It's a very polite discussion covering everything from petty revenge to female genitalia. <laughs> I don't know what that looks like. Plus, we sent Alex Simwise into the Golden Guy district of Tokyo to sample the local boozy fare, or as the Japanese say, to get her drank on. It's a very expressive language. Then, Candace Bailey gets taught advanced paintball techniques in a vision quest to discover her inner nerd. But will she learn enough to be able to take on the pros? We can only pray. And latex plus vacuum cleaners equals WTF! Mistress January! <laughs> That's so sweet! <laughs> Mistress January gets all A-typing in a very special oh. studio demonstration of the arguably titillating back bed fetish. As long as she's not getting all type 1-y. <laughs> Time now to run down the top five things on the web. Let's go around the net. It just looks weird. It looks weird. Looks good. Russians. Mm. We love them. Those irradiated, vodka-drenched lunatics have provided the Internet with enough fodder to fill an entire frigid wasteland. Oh, in honor of those adorable Eastern Slavs, we're dedicating today's ATN to all things Ruski. In a number five, <laughs> <laughs> an armor explosion. <laughs> Russians say good morning. Yeah, haven't they heard of alarm clocks? <laughs> they have alarm clocks. It's just they can't hear them over the explosion. One at that and that now. That was actually a good one. I hear that. Hey, back in 1991, you guys remember that year, right? Oh, yeah. The Soviet Union collapsed. Oopsie. And it gave rise to a more democratic society, and they decided to give capitalism a try. And since then, they've gotten pretty good at it. Take our number four video, for instance. A Super Bowl-worthy car commercial. Totally. Car yeah. Proving Remember that scene in Total Recall? It was like two weeks. Two weeks. I was waiting for you to just hold your head and pass it to a security guard. <laughs> Have a nice day. <laughs> Go ahead. We're good. A Super Bowl. I know what it says. <laughs> A Super Bowl worthy car insurance commercial proving those Russians can manipulate <laughs> consumer spending just like the big boys. Я насчёт выплат по ОСАГО. Either that or it's the most boring Transformer sequel of all time. <laughs> I'd actually rather watch that than Shia LaBeouf for an hour. Now, to be uh, let's be honest. I do like Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> <laughs> Dreamy! Mm. Uh, in at number three, it's a report from Russia Today News Network. Huge fans here in the studio. Uh, it's about a, about a donkey being used to promote parasailing for a leisure company. Mm. Evidently, donkeys don't understand simple concepts like beach time fun or flight. <laughs> Luckily, the donkey survived the ordeal, and police say it was being used to promote parasailing, adding that no one reported it happening, even though beachgoers were distressed by seeing the donkeys suffering. Officials are now looking at bringing animal cruelty charges, which could land the organizers with a two-year jail sentence. 
Seriously, I, I think the Russian donkey show beats the Mexican one. <laughs> needs to open up a Russian brand. I know. Seriously, if that donkey had pants, it would have crapped them. <laughs> Given the offensively cold temperatures that Russians have to endure, it's not surprising that they're simply not used to being naked. No, so naturally, when the man in her number two video finds himself disclothed, he flips his Russian lid. You don't see any cops show up. It just doesn't happen. Mm. Apparently, Russians settle many of their disputes with face punching. I like it. I mean, why clog up the system with needless litigation? Face punches. <laughs> yeah. You can learn something from those guys. It works. Uh, still ahead, some Soviets get the sheep kicked out of them. <laughs> one today, the Russian version of cow tipping. Yeah, it's called Avoid the Sheep. And uh, as you're about to see, these ne'er-do-well skis, oh. 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 they kind of suck at it. Oh. <laughs> 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 Holy crap, Russian sheep are angry. That they are, Alessandra Torasani. <laughs> it's a cultural oddity that's even reflected in the Soviet version of the popular nursery rhyme. Baba Black Sheep. If I, uh, if I may. Oh no, of course. Okay. <clears throat> it's a rough, rough translation. All right. Um, <clears throat> Baba Black Sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> your mother. To get your daily viral fix and to check out all the viral videos we have to offer, go to g4tv.com slash around the net. The Japanese like a little drinky drink. Yeah, good thing Alex Simwise does as well. We sent her into the Golden Guy District of Tokyo to do some educational imbibing. Come by! Hey guys, if you're in Shinjuku and you happen across the Golden Guy area, it's six narrow alleyways packed with over 200 bars and it's so cool. It's full of really funky and unique establishments and it's part of old Tokyo. So if you come in here, you're in for one hell of a night. The bars here are so close that they're practically connected to each other. And uh, they're all different themes. We've got music, we've got anime, we've got wrestling. So uh, let's go and check a few out. Bar death match? Hi. Oh, this is awesome. Wow, this looks a bit like my bedroom. So this is uh, Golden Guy's uh, wrestling, heavy metal, and cult movie bar. So, you know, not only is there like 24 hour wrestling on, but there's also loads of films like Clockwork Orange, loads of horror movies, loads of figures of Leatherface, got Yoda in here. Uh, it's pretty much like every geeky fanboy's bedroom. Emilio Estevez, so you really can't go wrong with a bit of Emilio, is what I'm thinking. 
I'm gonna arm wrestle for my drink because I'm I'm cheap. I want it for free. One, two, three. Oh, oh, strong. Oh, 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 <laughs> okay, so this bar is called Bar Jewel after Jules Verne, the French writer, and it has a bit of a boarding school theme going on. Um, it actually feels a little bit English uh, with because all the waitresses here are, are dressed up as school boys, which is kind of cool, you know. I like school boys, I like school girls, you know. I don't discriminate. It's quite big for for one of these uh, golden guy bars. You know, party time in the lounge. Yeah, it's pretty fun. You can actually swing a cat in here. It looks a little bit like a sperm. I'm gonna go in your womb. That's what it sings. Can pie to schoolboys. Cheers. That guy. That guy's totally. He's so drunk. Wow. This is small. <laughs> okay. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Okay, well this is a place where you can really geek out. You can watch anime on the big screen, you can play computer games, read manga. I guess we've got like a, a variety of figures here, like everywhere. It's kind of like being in the G4 offices, the amount of figures there are here. We've got loads of artwork on the walls, which is uh, when the artists come in here, they, they, they leave their mark. I'll hunt your monster. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I died. Can't buy. <laughs> <laughs> Stiff drink. I've got to go, but don't worry, golden guy. I'll be back. But next time I'm going to bring some friends so we can have a proper pub crawl. That's funny. I literally just opened up my own fiend bar. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's called Attack of the Scotch. And, uh, thank you. Well, Very I'm proud of it. Come check it out. It's actually uh, there's only enough room for one. So. Oh. Unbearably sad. That's why I opened the bar. <laughs> Still ahead, Candace Bailey risks pride in a few painful miles to the badass of the whip ass. Later, Katie Sackhoff shoots the breeze about a well on 24, internet fetish porn, and most importantly, the giant. Stay <laughs> tuned. guys are trying to pitch a baseball to their friend with a slingshot. What happens next? Does the ball fly right into the guy's head? Does he hit the ball and nail the camera guy in the junk? Or does the slingshot just snap? Find out when we return. These guys are trying to pitch a baseball to their friend with a slingshot. What happens next? Does the ball fly right into the guy's head? Does he hit the ball and nail the camera guy in the junk? Or does the slingshot just snap? I'm gonna try to hit you though. I'm gonna go to your... Oh. <laughs> Come on, am I the only one who thinks they should be using slingshots in the pros? You guys might wanna hear this. It was pretty good. Um, Candace Bailey is gonna grab some colorful balls. Oh. And she's gonna shoot some colorful oh. balls. <laughs> Tell me we're talking about paintball. So far in my vision quest, I've gotten to do a lot of really cool things. But being caught in the line of paintball fire, I have a feeling isn't going to be quite so much fun. To avoid coming out of here looking like a Jackson Pollock, G4 hooked me up with my own paintball Jedi Master, Chris LaSoya, who was to train me in the ways of paintball wisdom. So 
Chris, can you explain to me what everything is going to do? You have your pants. Uh, a lot of people, they, they built in knee pads now, so they're you know, coming out here. The ground's kind of hard. The jersey you got here has padded chest protection. So my boobies. Then you have the pack that carries your paintball. Yeah, this really shoots a big load, huh? Is it the size of the pod that matters? It is the size of the pod that matters. Oh. And Do I, I have a big pod? Hope oh, not. <laughs> Last but not least, oh, this, is, this is your marker. This is, this is the most important thing. You're going to open your lid, and you pour this in there. Oops. Point at your target and fire. OK, typically what you want to do when you're behind a, a bunker like this, mm -hmm. you know, you want to expose yourself as little as possible. Okay. When you hold your marker, and all you got to do is pop up, you shoot, and you come back down. <laughs> Absolutely. Think you got it down? I think we you can feel do comfortable? This. You know, as comfortable as I can feel. As I hone my skills, I felt the presence of another warrior looking to put me to the test. Good shoot, Candace. It's gonna be harder than I thought. Have you done this before? I have, I've done it a few times. I've been hit, I'll tell you that, and it does not feel good. Ready. Team Candace, you have me and Brandon. Team Sarah, you have Chemo and Bear. It's three on three. The center flag is your objective. You guys are gonna take this side, we're taking that side. You guys ready? Born ready. Down. I can't get it. I'm scared. You got him. You got him. With paintballs raining down around me, I saw my target dead ahead. You're the better shooter, though. Well, there's one way to find out. and variegated species. For instance, <laughs> some people like apples, other prefer plums. Yes, and some people like to be folded into a latex envelope and have a plum <laughs> suck out all the air so they can't move while someone sits on their face. WTF? <laughs> <laughs> what you talk about, Alessandra? Sure, we've covered a lot of strange scenes on WTF before, but one strain of videos that has unavoidably left a mark is the latex fetish. From gas masks to cat suits to full body inflation, this fetish is filled with things that make you go, now what the f Although there is one part to this fetish that we have yet to explore, and that is the vac bed. Short for, yep, you guessed it, vacuum bed. A vacuum bed is a latex envelope spanned by a frame and a suction pump that removes most of the air in the envelope. To operate, the user is placed inside the bed and zipped closed. An accomplice then turns on the vacuum, which takes about 10 seconds to suck all the air out. To avoid suffocation, vac bed users must breathe through a tube while enjoying their skin-tight experience. Once the air is sucked out, they can remain in the vacuum state for hours. The idea is to become so entrapped by the latex that you feel completely immobilized while you're in it. This gives the fetishist a sense of weightlessness, not knowing where their skin ends and where the latex begins. Some users describe it as a transcendental experience, much like one would receive from using a sensory deprivation tank. 
And with most S&M activities, psychologists theorize that the fetishist is stimulated by the idea of restraint. This is likely why some sites like Maxita.com sell straight jackets and body bags along with their extreme Psychovax, complete with straps and buckles to contain the user even more. Most, but not all, vac beds are latex. Some are nylon or regular thin plastic, and some have special designs, like this custom Union Jack bed, or my favorite, the circuit board vac. <laughs> On the web, there are dozens of vac bed distributors selling beds for 200 to 700 bucks each, depending on the color and size. And with over 800 videos on YouTube from channels like Eurocat Suits and Rubber Eric, it seems like there are never enough back beds to go around. In the S&M community, using a back bed is considered the ultimate form of latex bondage. And it's definitely extreme. After all, without supervision, these things can be severely dangerous. So if you're gonna vac, have a friend there to operate and to let you out. Now, whether you love latex or you just enjoy things that suck, we're not saying it's wrong to use a back bed. No. We're just saying, what the f***? All right. So we thought, for some fun reason, we'd try this fetish out for ourselves. So here to help us with the back bed, Mistress, Mistress January Seraph is here. Hello there, Mistress. Hello. How are you? Isn't she gorgeous? How long, how long have you been actually doing the vac bed stuff? Okay, well, I've been a latex fetishist since, like, 2006, and mm -hmm. about four years ago, I discovered vac beds. I think they're amazing. They're so much fun. Yeah. It's like do, you have to be, like, do you have to be certified for something like this? Is there an online course? How does no, that work? No, there's no course, but I recommend not doing it yourself because then you'll never get out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what exactly good, good, good is tutorial. your primary role in this demonstration? Okay, well, here I'm just going to be a facilitator, but oh. in private settings, I'm a dominatrix, so... Well, we want you to feel at home here on Attack of the Show, so <laughs> however you. you interpret that is totally fine, yeah. Fantastic. Who's going to be first? Carrie, actually. We flipped a coin backstage. Congratulations. <laughs> you won, so why don't you go ahead and... Uh, okay, Kevin, I'll yep. get in there. Why don't you go ahead and hop on over there? Uh, Is there a proper way to get okay. in this thing? You want to go feet first? Feet first. Remember um, this, feet don't first. Don't point your toes because you'll rip it. <laughs> don't, point, don't point your toes, okay? Uh, oh. Oh. And so Hi. when you're getting the back bed, you want to you wanna remove all sharp anything yeah, and no cell metal. phones and all that good stuff. No Take out the phones. bishop's dilemma. Don't have anything that it's could It's a little it. slimy in here. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I used it in pre-show. <laughs> get on through. Oh, hey, hey, it's a girl. Hi. Here we go. Okay. And, if, if, yeah. This in January, we just have like a little feeling. mini shop back here, and that's all yeah, it's going to take to get all the air out. It's awesome. Really good. And I just relax as if that's possible. Yeah, as, <laughs> as best as you can. Yeah. How do you feel? I, I feel uh, I'm getting sleepy now. Um, my toes feel a little bit squishy. Okay. Uh, that's all because I dosed your Red Bull. It has nothing to do <laughs> with the back bed. Oh, yeah. But, uh, it's actually quite warm in here, though. It's nice and warm in here. Oh, good. So good. there is some love to be and, had. And zippers are going to hold the air in? Zippers January? are going to hold the air in for the most part. It's not an airtight seal, but you'll see. Do you want to push that button over there for me? <laughs> Whatever you want me to push, I will gladly, <laughs> gladly touch. Are you ready, Carrie? Be gentle with me, Kevin. January, it's good to go? Yeah, it's good to go. Enjoy, folks. Spread your legs. <laughs> oh, oh, what? from a Ziploc bag. It's yeah. kind of, yeah. I like it, it's a good feeling. Could you also use this to preserve trail mix? <laughs> I suppose you could. Okay. You could. It does make me a little nervous. I feel quite vulnerable. Really? You don't look vulnerable. Look at the look in her eye when I said vulnerable to you. Should I be, should I be concerned at all? Do you like well, I want to get this microphone one? out of the way. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I don't know, I might want to with those. Is this what? what somebody would want to have happen to them when in this bed? Are yeah. you tickled? I'm going to sell my perspective on YouTube. I can see how this could be exciting. This is tickled? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's baby tickle-ish. No. Oh, it's baby tickle-ish. Oh. How about you? What's that? Is it your turn? To, to, <laughs> wait, to tickle Carrie or to hop in there? Hop no, in I'll, there. I'll hop in there, yeah, why not? How was it? of my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> I think someone's got a new Facebook profile page. Yeah! <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, that's good. Thanks. That's very Surround good. Your hair. Uh, so how long do people like to stay inside of beds like this, Jamie? Depends on the person. I've left people in there for hours at a time. Wait, do you just go to Rouse and get no. some... <laughs> no. you go do some grocery shopping and it's come back? It's so I'll put like, their favorite iTunes headphones in and do a little sensory deprivation of blindfold. All right. Run ice cubes down the outside. 
Okay, I, do, let's get some ice cubes right now <laughs> from the show ice freezer. Cubes for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. And Good I job, think, Carrie. I think Kevin needs to get in here. Yeah, I'm gonna hop in. Yeah. Yeah. Now, are you gonna be doing anything to Kevin that maybe you didn't do to me? Mm, maybe. On live TV. Yeah, boy, you, can ready? Dream. you ready? You ready? Okay. Right. He first. Do we have any, do you like normally Febreze this sort of thing? Or do just... You know, you wash it with dish soap. Oh, all right. <laughs> No, just, just keep that way. know that I, I was in there first, okay? Yeah, no, Whatever it. you get, it's sloppy seconds. So it's all right. <laughs> I will take it. <laughs> okay. So tell us how it feels. Uh, what do you think? You... Uh, no, it feels pretty much the same. I feel like I'm in a big garbage bag right now. <laughs> so uh, are you enjoying the smell? Because sometimes people like that, that latex, latex smell. Latex yeah, stuff. no, it brings me back to the... Uh... Reminds you of condoms? Uh, what are those? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the 70s. Yeah, no, it's just... <laughs> All right, so am I all? Yeah, oh, wow, that's, that's, that's it. Button. It's yeah. time. You guys ready? Yeah! yeah. Three, two, one, go. Okay, spread. Oh, oh. Feel it okay. stuck. Okay. All right. Oh, all right. All right, that took a turn. No, I wasn't expecting that. What's going that. on, Kevin? Please what are you talking What? Oh, let's not, um. You pack it? What are you talking We're fine. We're all friends right, here. Right. We're all friends here. I'm sorry, but I, I thought it'd be bigger. <laughs> if I had a nickel, yeah. I'm telling you. So, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and hey, by the way, uh, my mom didn't want me to drop out of community college right. because she was worried that I would lose my speech class credits. <laughs> Hi, Mom! <laughs> What, what would one do to Kevin while he's in here? I'm just wondering. Well, I could. You could tweet me. On. I could tweet you. You guys are hang out. Yeah. I could Twitter at you. Uh huh. I could on your and cut off your air. Oh. <laughs> okay. How do I sign up for that? Right. How do we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I feel like we're not on Oprah anymore. No. Uh, what happened? What happened here? <laughs> I, I don't ever want to see Oprah in one of these. Actually, <laughs> Mistress January, you are ten kinds of awesome. Uh, how can we find and follow you on Twitter? Um. Google me, January Sarah. Okay. Or you can find me on Twitter, which is Twitter slash January Sarah. Well, thank you so much for being here, Mistress Yay! January. <laughs> and, uh, I'm thinking uh, that there's absolutely no way we're going to top this. Oh, she was fun. In fact, once again, I would love to thank Mistress January for showing me a side of myself that I did not know existed. <laughs> You're an S&M fetishist? No, I, I have a latex allergy. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Let me tell you, it takes more than calamine lotion to take that itch away. Uh, at the rate we're going, it won't be long before climate change causes the earth to crisp and brown like a giant meatball. Yay, meatballs are delicious! <laughs> Perhaps, but I was being metaphorical. I was oh. trying to say that the, the, the planet is dying and that's bad, you know what I mean? Oh, agreed. Yeah. And yet, now I want meatballs. Okay, well, it's, uh, it's a good thing that someone out there is working on it, right? Great. Oh, harmful greenhouse gases. When will you stop choking our planet to death? With innovations like these, it might actually be sooner than you think. If you're in the market for an energy efficient car, you have lots of options. But what if you're a biker looking to cruise in eco-friendly style? Well, the folks at Bramo have your leather vest covered back. Check out the 2011 Inertia Plus, a zero emissions motorcycle. Featuring a massive 6 kilowatt lithium ion battery, the Inertia Plus has a top speed of 60 miles an hour with a driving range of 80 miles on a single charge. The manufacturers have included an onboard 850 watt US standard battery charger, meaning any American electrical outlet can be used as a charging station. The Inertia Plus has no clutch or the need to shift gears, making this motorcycle easy to operate for novice bikers. Bramo is currently accepting orders of the Inertia Plus for the reasonable price of $8,995. Taking public transportation has always been a simple way to help reduce the amount of harmful pollutants in our atmosphere. Thanks to a green ovation by the Spanish company Oprid, riding the bus might make you more than just eco-friends with our planet. This is the Bus Bar, a charging system for electric buses. The overhead pantograph device uses the charging abilities of lithium titanate batteries, allowing for short charge times with multiple discharges. Here's how it works. 
At the end of each route, the bus pulls into the bus bar. Then the driver presses a button to initiate the charging sequence. After five minutes, the bus is fully charged and ready to complete the next route, where at the end, the process is repeated. This system would allow an electric bus to operate all day using 100% electric power. When not in use, the bus bar is completely de-energized and grounded to avoid electrocution. Once fully retracted, it's no more obtrusive than a traffic light. Like many revolutionary ideas, it might be a while before the bus bar is featured in a town near you. Maybe Oprah needs to focus their attention on the real issues facing buses today, like the lack of adjacent amber lamps. Green amber lamps. Landfills are a necessary evil in every society. While we need a final resting place for our garbage, Landfills produce harmful emissions and they take up lots of space. Fortunately, the UK company Advanced Plasma Power has devised a plan to help lessen the negative impact of these wastelands. They'll be building a power plant on an eastern Belgium dump site that converts the garbage from the landfill into a usable fuel. The plant uses gasification and a plasma conversion process divided into four steps. First, all recyclable materials are separated from the pile. Then the remaining waste is sent to a gasifier, producing an ash byproduct and a crude gas. With help from a plasma converter, the ash is transformed into an environmentally friendly building material, while the gas is refined into a usable synthetic fuel. Finally, this fuel is used to run a 60 megawatt power plant, which is capable of powering 60,000 homes. It may not be treasure, but one man's garbage could be another man's power source. From your trash to vehicles for one or many, everything can use a makeover courtesy of Green Tech. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice, Alexandra. Oh, don't pretend like this wasn't inevitable. You want some? Yeah, kinda. Mm -hmm. Tough nuggies. <laughs> <laughs> CES is back and <laughs> AOTS is expanding its coverage. Yay! We spent money on that bit. Put some meatballs in my mouth. Oh, I, was... I took a nibble and it wasn't that bad, but the entire thing is a whole. <laughs> that is a vegan commitment. <laughs> or vegan meatballs. Um, Morgan Webb and I will be hosting live from the moment the doors open. <laughs> And along with our team of techno nerds, we'll be scouring more than two million feet Yay! of space for your next gadget obsession. That's CES 2011 live on January 6th. Hey, for more information, go to g4tv.com slash CES 2011. Mm. Ready? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Here, one more. Hurry, hurry. Stay tuned, Katie Sackhoff's up next. A little while ago, Katie Sackhoff came into the studio, and despite her strange, inexplicable hatred for technology, we all still fell in love with her. Um, and use the old fax machine. The fax press waiting. So fax your questions for Katie right now, because in a minute we're going to get to them. But um, I, I have to ask you, you, we were talking about the, the dangling fetish, because you, were, you saw it on the show. Yeah. Have, you, have you been known to dangle? Have you dangled? <laughs> This is so wrong. This is like this is like something you would see on hollymadison.com. Katie, it's, it's so um, right. It's, I don't know if Ashley Madison. Is there a Holly Madison? Is it, is that... I'm thinking of the girl from that's like slept with Hugh Hefner, but I think it is Ashley Madison. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who hasn't? I mean, you're thinking of every girl that has her own She's actually com. from my hometown. Ashley Madison or Holly Madison? Holly Madison is from St. Helens, Oregon. Well, there, 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 does she have souvenirs in a gift shop? What do you get for Could that? Can you imagine? <laughs> like, welcome to St. Helens, Oregon. Yeah. Somebody's <laughs> vagina. Yeah. There's a, look at the plaster mold. Here it is. <laughs> Maybe it's a... I've, was, I've, I've been on the show five seconds and I've been beeped. What? Can you no, no, we don't beep vagina around you here. Don't? No, we, we love vagina. We welcome it with a warm embrace. In my Yay! house. Yay! Yeah, as Woo! it should be. But do you have, like, because you could make a lot of money just by dangling a sandal online, apparently. And I'm wondering, do you have any fetishes? Do you, are you familiar with creepy fetishes? I'm familiar with a few. I'm I mean, you've sure. got nerd fans, so they must be requesting sure some I'm weird in, photos. I'm sure and... I'm in some of them somewhere. <laughs> Photoshopped or otherwise? Can you imagine? <laughs> my mom actually sent me this picture of someone who had photoshopped my head on this woman with a ball gag. What? <laughs> Why is... And I was like, I wish I had her ass. <laughs> you know? 
<laughs> like I was literally looking at it going, God, that was like 18. But why did mom send it? Was it like, hey, look what I learned how to do in computer class? <laughs> My mom used to Google me just to make sure, like, see how famous I was. Oh, I, I thought she was to... protecting you from the internet. No, I used to. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm going to protect my yeah. daughter. No, I used to Google myself to see how much more famous I was than my ex-boyfriend, who now plays hockey for Boston. Oh. I have more websites Ice than sticks. you. Yeah. Oh, congrats. <laughs> Woo! Is that how it, like, you know, when when some women get broken up with, they're like, I'm going to hit the gym and I'm going to show Roger, no. and you're like, I'm going to I'm going to search I, I engine gonna, optimize my blog. I am going to Google myself. I'm going to outrank him. I'm going to get Google ads. God. So every search he does, it's my face. Seriously, like a couple weeks ago, I think I was like the number one search on Google. I forwarded it to him. Nice. I was like, no, I'm was serious, it, I didn't. Oh, was it just, I was going to say, was it just your name or was it your name and fantasy. then a questionable search term? There's a, there's, there is something that says that I have to not contact him anymore. <laughs> like a <laughs> legal, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Could you imagine? No, I, like... I could imagine. That's why I was asking. Is this a legal document or something of that nature? Or? Yeah, no, it's fine. I was young. I was like 19. Uh, there, people are frantically yelling in my ear that I have to ask about 24, so oh, I'd like Bob, to ask right. about 24. We should I talk hear, about my current job. I hear that 24 has an amazing set and not only that, but an amazing writer's room that you give the gift of, of alcohol to the writers as well? You know, something that I've learned is that for Christmas with crews, there's so many of them, and y it would be expensive to buy them what you want to buy them. And That's so why I don't get them anything. It's true, right? <laughs> like, hey, guys, good job yeah. with the camera pointing. You, like, just don't show up. Yeah. And they're like, thank God. <laughs> exactly. We don't <laughs> have to deal with his crap. <laughs> no, I, um, I learned a long time ago to buy them the little airplane bottles of liquor, because what other adult would be happy about a present that was $3? <laughs> you, know? so you just get there's no other gift little they micro would... bottles of I vodka do. And... and i walked around with a big tub and i was like here here, <laughs> we, here. we call that enabling around here by the way that's <laughs> it's totally fine that's what i call it too but i'm like, <laughs> You're like and miraculously i had a lot more lines in the next, I <laughs> the did. next few episodes I did. they were like we love you you play you know i mean obviously from from battlestar that's immediate nerd cred and 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 people assume that you're a techie and whatnot and then you're a data anal uh, analyst as well but i hear <laughs> that you hate technology like you're not a fan you don't even like typing seriously the fax machines like burning up now they're like this bitch hates technology <laughs> no is that is that, <laughs> is she? Is that true because you googled yourself you at least went through that unless you yelled at someone to google yourself for I you i can but... google myself i mean i i'm i'm intelligent enough to be able to like type katie sackoff it's like pretty much, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much i can type the end and thing and Katie. Is there a reason you're it. you're against the technology? You just no, don't. Well, you know, I I am not against technology. I have mm -hmm. a BlackBerry that I think um, my boyfriend had to eventually throw my old phone like in water so I would like actually activate my BlackBerry, which nice. has been in a cupboard for like two years. And um, I, I, f I find that I miss the written letter. You know, there's something so personal about getting a letter from somebody. It's a keepsake. Mm -hmm. You know, I have. Letters that I got from boys in high school that I keep, and not that I read them. It's just at no, some point my children. No, but you take them out and sniff them every now and then do. just to remember the essence. Could you imagine? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> imagine a world with flying cars, a teleporter in each kitchen, and a police force with cybernetic animal parts and missile nipples. <laughs> the world of tomorrow is today, friends. It's time to attack these super futuristic items. I don't know about you, but I was promised that in the future, everything that could fly would. That's why I'm happy to see that the future has arrived with this flying alarm clock. <laughs> the clock itself doesn't exactly fly, but it is a new and effective approach to waking up. When your alarm goes off, a propeller is launched from the clock so that it flies across the room. The piercing noise of the alarm doesn't <laughs> stop you until you retrieve the propeller and place it back on the clock. And by that time, you should be both awake and agitated. <laughs> it's time to stop living in the past alarm clock-wise. <laughs> and you may as well, because it's only 20 bucks from ThinkGeek.com. <laughs> Do you remember the old days when phones had buttons and keyboards had keys? Silly. <laughs> it's time to swear off the pushing things once and for all, this Bluetooth laser virtual Ooh. keyboard. Now you can project a full-size keyboard onto any flat surface. Connect it via Bluetooth to your home computer or even your cell phone or just carry it around in your pocket, waiting to impress people. <laughs> and if you're feeling nostalgic, don't worry, your typing will be accompanied by simulated sounds of clacking keys. Oh. It'll run you 150 bones on thinkgeek.com, but it comes on lasers. Oh. Come on, lasers! <laughs> I haven't said that for anything. <laughs> <laughs> And it's not really the future until we have robots doing our bidding. Well, we're one step closer thanks to the AnyBots company.
With the help of this personal avatar, your days of morning commutes and wearing pants are numbered. <laughs> now you can send your AnyBot to meetings while you control it from your home computer. It connects to the web using Wi-Fi and comes complete with a speaker, microphone, camera, and video display. So this little guy can be your eyes, ears, mouth, and wheels. Now, it's a little pricey, but isn't completely detached from the outside world with a mere 15 grand? You can pre-order now from AnyBots.com. Head on over to G4TV.com slash AOTS for info on any of these futuristic finds. Stick around. There's more after Attack This. Yay! Coming up tomorrow on an all-new Attack of the Show. Adam Sessler will be in studio to lay out a Games of the Year edition of Game Break. Alex Simwise flirts with Japanese gentlemen callers as she learns what it takes to work in a Tokyo hostess club. And Sarah Underwood goes all John Rambo and blows stuff to smithereens at the Oklahoma Full Auto Shoot. See it tomorrow. You know, in the not too distant future, machines will likely take over the planet. Until then, they have the extreme misfortune of being operated by humans. It's time for today's epic fail. Seven. Seven since I started moving. Imagine that dinner that night. So how was your day at work, honey? Hmm. <laughs> Something made that crane go completely flaccid. Oh. What could have done that? It's not the crane's fault. I mean, it happens to some cranes sometimes. <laughs> I mean, it's, just, it's, not, it's not a big deal. I mean, sometimes cranes do that. What a fail it. Do this graphic thing. <laughs> Everyone for tuning in tonight, really. Yay! And thank you, Alessandra Torsan, for being here. Good night. Bye. Yay! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Look at the schoolgirl. <laughs>